stress tests of the banks occurring as we're speaking now. We're expecting the results in another couple of weeks. My guest today, William Black, Associate Professor of Economics and Law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, says the stress test, it's a hoax. They're really not stress testing the banks. It's a complete sham. It's a Potemkin model of fake village fronts built to fool people. Interesting, because we've talked about the fact that they're not going to let the banks that fail, fail, and they fail. They've said that very clearly, that if banks that need more capital, are going to get more capital. You're saying whether or not they fail, we're not even going to be, know whether or not the banks have failed or not, whether, because of the way the stress test, quote unquote, is being structured? The stress test is designed so that nobody we think well of will ever fail the stress test. Entities that they are not favored by Geithner, you know, he may use the stress test to kill them. Right. Uh, but no, the banks that really need desperately to be closed will not be closed under the stress test. Interesting. So, so what is it, and we've heard some people criticize the stress test itself as saying the, the base, the, their worst case scenario, no one being serious, their worst case scenario is my baseline scenario. And you're saying that's only part of the problem with the stress test. It's not that they're not stress testing for a severe enough economic downturn, but it goes far beyond that. It does, but I, I agree with that critique. My, in my version of it is that uh, they, the original stress test was, you know, can we survive a two mile an hour wind? And now we're going to increase it 300 percent. Whoa, can we survive a six mile an hour wind? And of course, they're going to say, yes, we can, all is well. The stress tests were used at Fannie and Freddie. People forget this? Right. Right? There's a statutory stress test. And Fannie and Freddie, you know, called it nuclear winter scenario and such. And they could survive anything. Well, we've seen the reality, right? These stress tests are farces. They don't have any real purpose other than to fool us. The, the whole idea is to make us the chumps and to continue making us the chumps. We're supposed to go on, and, and in fact, they're almost, uh, they're almost open about this. They misdiagnose this as not a problem of there's bad assets, but that people are panicking. It's a lack of confidence. Right, right. so yes. confidence. So if we yes. lie to the people, and if they believe us, then they will be confident and all will be well. Right. Right, it's really Orwellian. Right, and, and obviously this is connected to Geithner's toxic uh, plan for the toxic assets, which, again, to, from my viewing, is a, is a way to take the assets, the liabilities off the bank's balance sheet, put them onto the back of the taxpayer, once again, but doing it in such a complicated way that it's not obvious to the average person that's what's happening. You're saying this is part of a broader idea to, to fool the American people? Yeah, but you're right to think of them together, because not only will we not close the banks that desperately need to be closed, not only will, will we not look for the bad assets, we, not only will we not look for where there were crimes and report them, but on top of that, we're going to provide an enormous subsidy from all of us as taxpayers. So that other that guy that goes ranting and raving about people getting subsidies, this, this is, is the, real the subsidy of all history, and it is going to go to the richest people, many of them non-Americans, uh, you look what just was disclosed. We gave $5 billion of U.S. taxpayer money to UBS at the same time that UBS was engaged in defrauding Treasury. Right, and now there's investigations of, of, of some UBS uh, high net worth individuals, and we want their tax research, but it pales in comparison to the, the money that went through AIG out the back door to right. UBS. Right, so there's a huge fine, $780 million against UBS, and guess who paid it? The taxpayers, the because taxpayers. we gave them $5 billion. Right. Well, I mean, you, you've worked in Washington before, and obviously there's a lot of cri criticism of Tim Geithner. You know, he's been on the job at Treasury now for a few months, but obviously before, as president of the New York Fed, he was a big believer in these stress tests, as you were saying earlier. Ben Bernanke's been on board for a long time. Barack Obama, he's been on the job a couple of months. He promised change. It seems like we're getting business as usual, if not worse, than we got from the prior administration. Yeah, this is actually worse. Um, it's a continuation, and in his jargon, he's a legacy regulator. Right? He's a failed legacy regulator, and he's dealing with failed assets, and he's using failed policies, and the result is a it's continuation failure. of the failure. But now he's adding to it and saying, we're not going to allow failure. And you're talking about by he, you're talking about Geithner. Geithner, we're right. not going to allow failure because we're going to have, take a massive amount of taxpayer money and subsidize the people that caused the problem. And they are going to make fortune. There's a, an article just ran that they're expecting well over 20% returns when you run the numbers. Right. 
Right, of course. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, that's why the bank stocks have risen, because it's a great deal for the banks. That is exactly there, why there, it is. There's no risen. doubt about that. So that's I, a bad news for the taxpayers when you see yeah. the bank stocks. So, I gotta, again, I've got to ask you, is President Obama, is he being misled here by Guyton, or is he on board with this from what you see? <sighs> well, I mean, Summers probably is the real problem behind the scene. If you look at Summers and Geithner and even Goolsby's statements, uh, they are very much bought into the things that produced the problem. So they helped shape the problem. I mean, mostly it was Bush, but they certainly Summers had, was, yeah, was they there certainly they had aid Eagle, from yeah. S Summers. Well, not only that, they passed a law that said we couldn't regulate CDS. Right. I mean, that's insane. Right. Uh, and he, Summers was uh, an absolute leader in that movement. All right. So the same guys are still in charge today. It's that's correct. Professor Black, thanks very much. Thank you.